we are so susceptible to any of these mind viruses. And, and part of what's happening is that you, when you abandon uh, a Christian root structure, it isn't like you, you can just exist without a basic understanding or philosophy of life. Something else is going to have to fill that void. And so you have, and one of the things that Peterson has been really on the forefront of, of explaining is, is at least in America, and I'm sure there's elements of this in, in Canada, but in, in the United States, the, the colleges of education that are basically certifying elementary school, middle school, and high school teachers has been co-opted by these viruses for, for more than a decade, a couple of decades now. And, and so you, you're beginning to see the downstream effects. Now, one of the things I want to say too about, about what people call the, the long, long march through the institutions, the strategy that was developed by progressives, you know, in the late sixties and early seventies to sort of figure out how to co-opt all these institutions. One of the things that, that you have to understand about, about this slow, steady, careful takeover of so many institutions that we're just now seeing the, the fruit of is that they have, they, they had a superior multi-generational strategy than Christian families. And, and part of what Abraham has taught us is whoever has the longest multi-generational strategy wins like that, that, that is the way to think about it. And so God gave us through the person of Abraham an understanding of the kinds of families that w- would be salt and light on the earth that would preserve the, the biblical understanding of, of God's ways. And instead of having a long-term strategy, most people within the Christian world have a one generation strategy for how to raise children, for how to think about the future. They, we, we've been co-opted, you know, decades before of a mind virus that destroyed our understanding of family, which gave us this very short sighted way of thinking about our children and our grandchildren, and our great grandchildren. We no longer had that multi-generational strategy. And in the, in the vacuum of that, the enemy has really created a multi-generational, lo- much longer term strategy. They were willing to wait for 30, 40, 50 years to take over institutions. And they knew that many of the, those who were in the process of doing this were going to die before they were going to see the fruit of all the, the work that they were putting in. And now we're beginning to see the fruit. And so p- part of this is a warning sign that when you do have this short-sighted vision, the enemy understands the power of a multi-generational strategy. And even though they're not having children, institutions have are very much like families in the fact that they tend to exist generationally they don't they don't pop in and out of existence and so if you have a family that that tends to exist for one generation and then resets but then you have an institution that lasts for 100 200 years it's actually a a better uh, vehicle for multi-generational strategy than even the family this is why we have to get families back into a multi-generational mindset because otherwise the institutions will completely destroy our are fragile one-generational families. You can't win with a short-term strategy like that. 